Shout out to Tyler, everybody. I want to greet you and thank you for tuning in to Hebrew Readers Church. We hope this has been a great and wonderful Shabbat starting off for everybody. And at the end of the Shabbat, depending on what part of the world you're in, we continually thank you for congregating with us, being a part of our family, and growing with us in the knowledge of Elohim. I'm your brother, Zachariah, and this is my brother, Kasafo. And we are the brothers here at Hebrew Readers. We Thank you for all the support, and we constantly are praying for you all, and we're hoping that you all are praying for us as well. Today, we're going to be going into the Feast of Dedication, the laws pertaining to the Feast of Dedication, and how the Feast of Dedication came about. All right, Kafa, you ready? Uh, yes. Uh, the Feast of Dedication is on the 25th of the ninth month for eight days until the first day of the 10th month. It's a commemoration of the dedication of the altar in the days of Maccabees, after it had been defiled by the abomination of desolation. It is a time of rejoicing and the holy convocation. We can look at the account of what happened to see how the altar was defiled in the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41 to 53. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and every one should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to this religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should also lead their children uncircumcised to make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation, to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom, and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them, to wit every one that forsook the law. And so they committed evil in the land, and drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor. We see the apostatizing of the Jews to forsake the laws and embrace the religions of the world. This also brought about the setting up of the abomination of desolation. Can we read First Maccabees? Chapter 1, verse 54 and 59, please. All right. Now the 15th day of the month, Caslu, in the 140 and 5th year, they set up an abomination of desolation upon the altar and built it idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. Now the 5 and 20th day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of Elohim. Now, thankfully, Ahia was gracious that Judas Maccabees and the Israelites cleansed the sanctuary and they set up a new altar for them to offer sacrifices. Let's look at our first Maccabees chapter 4, verse 41 to 59, please. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So he chose priests of blameless conversation such as have pleasure in the law, who cleanse the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane, they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it, wherefore they pulled it down, and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place, until there should come a prophet to show them what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law, and built a new altar according to the former, and made up the sanctuary, and the things that were within the temple, and hollowed the courts. 
They made also new holy vessels. And into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table. And upon the altar they burnt incense and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted that they might give light in the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Catholic, in the hundred forty and eighth year, they rose up the times in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. Even in that was it dedicated with songs and citterns and harps and cymbals. We see that the feast is a time of songs and rejoicing, as we shall do when the feast comes in tonight. Let's continue, please. Uh, verse 55. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the Elohim of heaven, who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days, and offered burnt offerings with gladness, and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields, and the gate and the chambers they renewed, and hanged doors upon them. Thus was their very great gladness among the people, for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day of the month Casalu with mirth and gladness. The feast that is ordained for us to keep with mirth and gladness, a time of celebration. Now, the scriptures show the people were being prepared for this feast of old time though it was not appointed until it got revealed unto Judas and Maccabees and those people of that time. Let's look at uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1 to 10, and then verse 18 to 36, please. 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. The brethren, the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea, wish unto the brethren, the Jews, that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. Allah I am be gracious unto you, and remember his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his faithful servants, and give you all in heart to serve him, and to do his will with a good courage and a willing mind. And open your hearts to his law and commandments, and sing you peace, and hear your prayers, and be at one with you, and never forsake you in time of trouble. And now we be here praying for you. What time, as Demetrius reigned, in the hundred threescore and ninth year, we the Jews wrote unto you in the extremity of trouble that came upon us in those years. From the time that Jason and his company revolted from the holy land and kingdom, and burned the porch and shed innocent blood. Then we prayed unto the Lord, and we were heard. We offered also sacrifices and fine flour, and lighted the lamps, and set forth the loaves. And now see that ye keep the feast of tabernacles in the Mount Castle. In the hundred four score and eighth year, the people that were at Jerusalem and in Judea, and the council and Judas sent greeting and help unto Aristobulus, King Platolemus, master who was of the stock of the anointed priest, and to the Jews that were in Egypt. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple upon the five and twentieth day of the month Casalu, we thought it necessary to certify you thereof, that ye also might keep it, as the Feast of Tabernacles, and of the fire which was given us when Nemus offered sacrifice. After that, he had builded the temple and the altar. Notice, he said, as the Feast of Tabernacles and of the fire. Now this feast was foreshown before, even though the appointed time wasn't revealed until the days of Maccabees. He's referring to it as the Feast of Tabernacles because Solomon had did an eight day feast for the dedication of the temple when he had built it so long ago. 
you may hear that the Feast of Dedication is also known as the Feast of Lights. And it's in reference to what happened with Nehemiah. All right. Uh, continue, please. Verse 19. For when our fathers were led into Persia, the priests that were then devout took the fire of the altar privily and hid it in a hollow place of a pit without water, where they kept it short so that the place was unknown to all men. Now after many years, when it pleased Elohim, Nemus, being sent from the king of Persia, did sin of the posterity of those priests that had hid it to the fire. But when they told us, they found no fire but thick water. Then commanded he them to draw it up and to bring it. And when the sacrifices were laid on, Nemus commanded the priest to sprinkle the wood and the things laid thereupon with the water. And when this was done, and the time came that the sun shone, which afore was hid in the cloud, there was a great fire kindled, so that every man marveled. And the priest made a prayer while the sacrifice was consuming. I say, both the priest and all the rest, Jonathan beginning and the rest answering thereunto, as Nemus did. And the prayer was after this manner, O Lord, Lord Elohim, creator of all things, who are fearful and strong and righteous and merciful, and the only and gracious King, the only giver of all things, the only just, almighty, and everlasting. Thou that deliverest Israel from all trouble, and didst choose the fathers, and sanctify them, receive the sacrifice for thy whole people Israel, and preserve thine own portion, and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us, Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, and let the heathen know that thou art our Elohim. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place, as Moses hath spoken. And the priest sung songs of thanksgiving. Now when the sacrifice was consumed, Nemus commanded the water that was left to be poured on the great stones. When this was done, there was kindled a flame, but it was consumed by the light that shines on the altar. So when this matter was known, it was told the king of Persia that in the place where the priests that were led away had hid the fire, there appeared water, and that Nemeth had purified the sacrifices therewith. Then the king enclosing the place made it holy, after he had tried the matter. And the king took many gifts and bestowed thereof on those whom he would gratify. And Nemus called this thing Nephthar, which is as much as to say a cleansing. But many men called it Nephi. So we see how events of old were building up to the revelation of the Feast of Dedication. Let's also see what else transpired in history. Let's look in Second Maccabees chapter 2, verse 1 to 23, please. And it's also found in the records that Jeremy the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take of the fire as it hath been signified. And how that the prophet, having given them the law, charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. And with other such speeches exhorted he them that the law should not depart from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet being warned of Elohim commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of Elohim. Interesting. We don't have that in the book of Jeremiah today. Right. So you can see how there are still records that we don't have that they had back then. <laughs> All right. Continue, please. And when Jeremy came hither, he found a hollow cave when he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way but they could not find it. Which when Jeremy perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that Elohim gathered his people again together, 
and receive them unto mercy. So from what's prophesied, where the Ark of the Covenant is and the altar of incense and the tabernacle is not going to be revealed until the people be gathered together. Right. And it's unto Yahshua shall the gathering of the people be. That gathering of the people is coming to pass in the 1260 days of preaching. And then Ahia would do his good pleasure at his appointed time, whichever time that may be. Continue, please. Then shall the Lord show them these things, and the glory of the Lord shall appear in the cloud also, as it was showed under Moses, and as when Solomon desired that the place might be honorably sanctified. It was also declared that he being wise offered the sacrifice of dedication and of the finishing of the temple. And as when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifices. Even so prayed Solomon also, and the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. And Moses said, Because the sin offering was not to be eaten, it was consumed. So Solomon kept those eight days. The same things also were reported in the writing and commentaries of Nemus, and how he founding a library gathered together the acts of the kings, and the prophets, and of David, and the epistles, of the kings concerning the holy gifts. As you can see in our captivities, there was a necessity to try to keep up with all our records as many were seeking to destroy them. As even the Babylonians, they burnt all the books and had not the Holy Spirit entered into Ezra to rewrite 204 books. We would have not had what we even have today. Yet, we don't have all the books over time as they continue to try to destroy all the records and have corrupted a lot of the text. All right. You at verse 14, right? Yeah, I'm at 14. Please. In the like manner also Judas gathered together all those things that were lost by reason of the war we had, and they remain with us. Wherefore, if ye have need thereof, send some to fetch them unto you. There you see in the wars, a lot of records were lost and we had to regather them. Whereas we then are about to celebrate the purification, we are written unto you, and you shall do well if you keep the same days. We hope also that the Allah that delivered all his people and gave them all an heritage in the kingdom and the priesthood and the sanctuary, as he promised in the law, will shortly have mercy upon us and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the holy place. For he hath delivered us out of great troubles, and hath purified the place. Now as concerning Judas, Maccabeus, and his brethren, and the purification of the great temple, and the dedication of the altar, and the wars against Antiochus Epiphany, and Epitor, his son, and the manifest signs that came from heaven unto those that behaved themselves manfully, to their honor for Judaism, so that being but a few, they overcame the whole country, and chased barbarous multitudes, and recovered again the temple renowned all the world over, and freed the city, and upheld the laws which were going down, the Lord being gracious unto them with all favor. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of Cyrene, in five books, we will assay to a bridge in one volume. Now, we know this feast is a true feast because even Yache also kept this feast. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 22 and 23, please. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Yache walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. See, the feast was kept in the winter, even as the seventh day Next week is the new moon feast of winter, and after that is the last day of the feast of dedication. Right. So you can see when Yache was walking in Solomon's porch, it was that last day because <laughs> winter doesn't start until that time, according to the records, calendar, and concepts. Uh, this feast is a holy convocation, so we can cook and clean the areas that pertain to our eating and cooking. The Holy Convocation Laws give us understanding that we may do so. When you read uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 16, please. 
And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And that's why we have comfort to know that we may do the work that pertains to our eating, whether it be making our food and cleaning up after eating our food. Right? Now, to get a good understanding of what that means, I'm going to read through some examples and whatnot. We can do work pretending to eating like cooking, cleaning, uh, cleaning the cooking area, the dishes, the kitchen floor, the dinner table, the dinner area, but we cannot clean our bedrooms or wash some clothes, for example, because it does not pertain to eating. For another example, we can clean off the kitchen stove because we have to cook on it and the table because we have to eat on it. We can sweep the kitchen because that is the area of cooking that we are working in for a sanitary environment. We can wash the dishes because that pertains to our eating since we have to use them. We can wipe off the counter where we are doing our food prep for the sanitary environment. We can clean the dinner table and sweep up the floor where our food fell while eating because that pertains to eating. If you're getting stuff out of the refrigerator for cooking and, and whatnot, and you knock something over in the refrigerator, and it spills all the refrigerator, you can clean it up because it pertains to eat and you're literally getting things out for, for cooking and whatnot. Right, right. Okay, thanks for that. Remember, we can do no buying or selling because it is a feast day, nor can we do any cleaning that does not pertain to eating on the feast. We must buy all our provisions for the feast before the Shabbat day since the feast starts on the first day of the week. So right now we should have gotten everything for the feast by the sixth day because we can't go to the store to buy anything else for the feast now, nor on the feast day. So it is expedient to buy all groceries by the 23rd of the ninth month to keep the Shabbat on the 24th of the ninth month, which is today. And then on the next day, we cook, dine, rejoice on the 25th of the ninth month for the Feast of Dedication so that we may keep the law in all righteousness. The Feast of Dedication is eight days long, but the 26th to 30th of the ninth month are not holy convocations like the 25th and the last day of the feast. On the first day of the 10th month. So we can do our normal work on those days with joy in our hearts in remembrance of the feast and on the new moon of the 10th month which is the Shabbat day this, this is actually the new moon feast of winter and the day after that is the first day of the 10th month and that is the eighth day of the feast of dedication hopefully you all have downloaded the calendar so you could understand what's being referenced here right now and if you haven't we invite you to download it on the website please just for clarification to people, when he's speaking of the ninth month and the 25th day, that's the Hebrew calendar. That's not the Gregorian calendar. Please go download the calendar off of the website so that you can, you can see the references and, and see how the, the days match up to the Hebrew calendar. All right. After the feast that we have that's coming tonight, when the sun goes down, we have five days where we can do our work. Within those five days, it's expedient for us to get all our provisions for that next weekend because on the Shabbat day we have the new moon feast of winter and after that we have the last day of the feast of dedications because those are feasts and we can do no buying or selling both those days so we get to cook and rejoice and enjoy the uh, festival that Ahai has given us to keep for both those days. So just a reiteration on the first and last day of the Feast of Dedication, the laws of the Shabbat apply except the fact that we may cook and clean the areas that pertain to our cooking and dining because those days are holy convocations, not normal Shabbat days. And also the Feast of New Moon, the Shabbat laws apply, yet we can cook and clean the areas that pertain to our eating because that is also a feast day. So aside from this, there's no special requirements for the Feast of Dedication save rejoicing, as was mentioned in the Book of Maccabees. So 
any other further edification that may be needed, you can contact us via email at hebrewreaders at gmail. I hope this was edifying. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.